Do you know who Russians consider the closest ally in the West? Our northern neighbor, Finland. Yes, very advanced, very developed, very fair, very neutral, fantastic Finland with excellent people. Our closest ally and a friend in the West. After all, it used to be a part of Russia. Yes, we had a war in the recent history, the Winter War, Talvisotta, but it was very quick and non-significant. I mean, how significant can it be since we just learned about this war in the late 80s? Yes, before that, we were kept in the dark. We didn't know we had a war with Finland. We didn't know anything about Talvisotta. Eh, just tiny little short war. But somewhere in my guts, I had a pretty good feeling that this tiny little war for us, not so tiny, huge for Finnish, but hey, what do I know? I, like most Russians, always considered Finland to be pro-Russian, very Russia-friendly, the uh, closest friend of Russia and defender of Russian interests in the West. That's the general idea of Finland in Russia. Then, one morning, we wake up and all of a sudden, we learn that Finland decided to join the North Atlantic military alliance and this is a kind of a this alliance is the enemy of russia these days finland our friend nato oh gosh ongelma ongelma that's something real real bad and finished Bida. i decided to investigate why finland decided to jump on nato trains so fast and so suddenly and what is the best way to learn well obviously talk to someone who is inside Finland. And I know just the right person. My fellow YouTuber Igor, born in Russia, but Finnish and spent all his life in Finland. He knows Finland inside out. It's going to be a very long, but incredibly interesting interview. And boy, I am up for quite a few surprises and revelations. Let's go see Igor. Hello, Igor. Welcome to Inside Russia. Hello, Konstantin. Nice to be here. Awesome that we uh, were able to do this. And, and thanks for your content on YouTube. It's uh, uncomparable with, the, with, the, uh, with your thoughts and uh, reality check that you publish on videos, many multiple videos daily. Well, and I thanks for also. watching. Thank you for watching and thanks for coming here today. No problem. Thanks. I would like to ask you a few questions. Sure. Uh, ready? Of course. I was born ready. And good morning to uh, Rostov on Don from Helsinki. <laughs> good morning to Helsinki and good morning to Finland. Igor, would you please tell about yourself as content creator and YouTuber? So, my name is Igor in Russia. I'm a, a YouTuber and um, I make videos about Russia, especially St. Petersburg, which I adore and love. What's up, guys? This is Igor in Russia. And uh, I'm, I'm glad to make a video about important topic and with Konstantin inside Russia. I filmed Russia with a Western perspective since I was born in Soviet Latvia and moved to Finland in 92 with, because I have Ingrian Finnish roots. Since I have the two worlds inside of me, the West and the East, I decided to actually uh, show the Russian world through my eyes in my YouTube channel, Igor in Russia. And that's where I create content, especially about St. Petersburg, which I think is the most awesome city in the world, and that's where we are right now, and that's a Kazan Cathedral. And compare it to the Western uh, standards, uh, if you if you like. And uh, I also make interesting videos about the Russian roots of Finland in my uh, Russian Finland series, then also vice versa, Finnish St. Petersburg series. I try to bridge the gap as uh, as well as I can with my perspective, with my videos, through through culture and uh, sites and people and uh, interaction and that sort of thing. So please subscribe, I'd be super appreciative. Igor in Russia on YouTube, YouTube's favorite Igor. I hope you find the discussion with me and Konstantin interesting because I surely did. My speciality is that uh, even though um, I have uh, Russian roots, some Russian born in Soviet Latvia, but I have also Ingrian Finn roots. And, uh, and this is why I was uh, living, I, I am living in Finland since 1992. So even though 
I'm, my roots are Russian and because I lived all my life in Finland, I have this unique possibility to actually basically uh, somehow not always compare. I don't want to say compare, but let's use that word, uh, compare the two and uh, try to explain some things, for example, which are un, 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 or mistakenly understood in the West. Because there's, there is a cultural and uh, language barrier, which, is, uh, which defies a lot of things, I believe. But yeah, that's what what's my channel is all about. And, uh, and I visited Russia properly for the first time, maybe 2016 and, and 17 in St. Petersburg. And that's the moment I was like, I love this place. I want to explore everything. But because I'm, uh, I'm also... Uh, out, well, outgoing person, I'm a, a social person. I was like, I want to share it with people and share something that, for example, in Finland, people mostly don't see because uh, tourism in Russia from Finland has always been very, very small. And I wanted to bring people together with my videos. Understood. By uh, You said that you first visited St. Petersburg in the proper way in 2016. What do you mean by proper way? Uh, well, it was quite touristic tra travel. I was, for example, we were, uh, I think we were traveling to different, uh, maybe Orthodox churches with our, uh, with my mom, for example, in 2013 or something, or I don't remember even. So, I mean, I was in St. Petersburg earlier, don't recall it. And if you were in St. Petersburg, Petersburg properly, you will recall it because it's so amazing. It's so huge and the historical and, and, and the people are so great. And I didn't have any memories of that. And properly I meant that I stopped and looked around and fell in love with the city. And, uh, and of course, not just St. Petersburg, uh, the Russian people. Uh, that's a lot of things, a lot of big part that's been missing from my life living in Finland. Yeah, that's Got what it. I meant. Yeah. Got it. Thank you. What is it like to be living in Finland? Uh, a huge question, of course. But uh, Finland, if, according to uh, a lot of news, Finland is the most happiest uh, nation in the world, which is, I think, received even in Finland with, uh, with astonishing because I don't know, does most of the people even believe that because Finnish people are known to be quite cold unless, the, uh, unless they uh, maybe drink a little bit of something, something. <laughs> uh, then they become very warm people. But otherwise they, they might appear very cold people as a nation. But uh, in Finland and Scandinavia, of course, uh, is, it's very high uh, living standards um finland and helsinki and the whole finland is very green so the na nature is very appreciated it's almost holy um it's a country where people um uh, what's the word for it? it's uh it's a country where everybody matters i mean you do, we don't uh, in finland people don't speak about like uh about a group of people as as one so basically ev the rights of uh, everyone are uh, appreciated the uh they uh uphold upheld so country of individuals so to speak individual was the word thanks yeah so individual matters a lot in finland and uh, that's actually one thing that is could be compared for example in russia somehow it feels that it's all about the masses because it's a huge country but still it's yes. um yeah, it's that a totally different way of thinking. But uh, uh, Finland lives in some kind of a pop bubble, and thank God, because here it is somehow surreal. Like, everybody is doing good, and if you're not good, at least you have possibilities from the government side that you can make it. Uh, you won't die on the streets unless you're like unable to use that help. And those people, there's a lot of people of, here. Because on the contrast, do I understand? You, yeah. Do I understand if you die on the street in Finland, then it's your personal choice? Yeah, definitely. Because uh, in Finland, there's a lot of great uh, systems that are in place to help you out. Um, 
even if you are like uh, even, unf even if uh, some people are using like drugs etc they are getting monthly monthly uh, help like financial help possibly they have possibilities to get other help also but usually of course the problem is that they they, they need to help themselves first but at least the system will give you everything so that uh, Roughly speaking, you won't die on the streets, so to speak. Understood. Individu individuals I matter, like I said. Igor, I studied at universities in two countries, in Russia and in the USA. We, in both countries, in both educational systems, we viewed Finland as some kind of a hybrid between capitalism and socialism. It is a widespread opinion that's how countries should be organized. And Finland and the Scandinavian countries are the example. Is that something that you agree with or not? Yeah, you're correct, actually. And uh, sometimes, well, I like sometimes I troll people because of my background. And uh, <laughs> everybody is afraid of uh, communists not understanding what that means but uh, it's like uh, it's it's like a thing to say like are you a communist you know not that they persecute them but i used used, used to say that uh, uh, i'm from soviet union and this is the most communist country i've lived in but uh, yes communism socialism it's a bit different but there uh, the scandinavian system from in my understanding uh, combines uh, the good parts of the socialism I guess you might be even understand even better maybe than me but uh, and this means that uh, some negative things that for example the taxation is really really high me as a capitalist in some ways it's uh, I don't agree with some things in that system because for example, if I do work more, uh, that means I'm going to be punished for that. Not like uh, America. Higher taxes. Yes, a lot of, and it's going to skyrocket fast if you like. If you have two jobs, etc., it's going to get like crazy. You can get to up to closer to fifty percent uh, taxation. So I'm just asking. At the same time, when we discussed about these problem, some problematic people or people who cannot get work and people who doesn't need to get work because they get a lot of, they paid annual, uh, monthly, almost as much as the person who works 37 and a half hours per week. So that's over, what's 120 hours or something. So is it fair? I don't know. I guess uh, some people think it is. But the, on the contrary, we have the system that everybody is doing good, so to speak. So I'm not gonna, I, didn't, I don't know did I answer your question because my mentality personally is a bit more capitalistic and there is parties in Finland also who support maybe my way of thinking more. They're like more, um, well, to the right, so to speak. But uh, otherwise, the whole system is quite centric. No matter mm -hmm. what you are, you are left or the right, there's like maybe one party that's what we, that we could call left. But uh, even the social democrats, the center or the uh, the right, not the right wing. Is it the right wing? Yeah, uh, uh, they're all quite in the center. So there's not actual real debate about changing the system after all. Even though they like to play with that in the during the election period. Interesting, interesting. You know, my opinion is that. Here in Russia, people would love to be living in a Finnish model of society <laughs> because they are so used to getting help, support from the government, and they rely on it. It's, it comes from the Soviet times. Mm -hmm. And they would welcome it. It's actually what the Russian state has been doing recently. It's been increasing support. It changing the social contract between uh, Russian citizens and the state. Basically, increasing support mm -hmm. but demanding more from the Russian citizens in terms of uh, not to speak of certain issues and things like that. Yeah. But I am a hybrid also between the, the Russian system and the pure capitalism, the American system, and my values are so different from what what you have in Finland, I am pro pure capitalism. The values are God, freedom, family, and hard work. I think that 
person uh, needs no help from the government. But the main mm-hmm. thing is the government must not interfere with what person does. Okay, I think yeah. that if we are all allowed to live as we please without interference, then we will all make we would all make good living for ourselves. Yeah, but from the individual side, of course, people are not touched at all. Actually, um, if we're talking about like taxation, yes, they are being uh, told what to do and etc. But so, like that's individually, huge. Taxation is huge. Like yeah, the I more agree. you work, the more you should make money. But your system punishes. The more you work, the more taxes you pay. So basically, yes. they discourage you to work. Exactly, and uh, I've. <laughs> it's gonna get. This is not the best, maybe market marketing uh, uh, slow speech for me, but we're just discussing here. So I've met people, for example, in my house where I used to live. That uh, uh, we were talking about something. We 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 met up like uh, people who lived in the same house, and we were like discussing what to do with the na- with the yard or something like that. I just went there because there was free free drinks or something but anyway and there was like <laughs> free hey, well, drinks i like that <laughs> well sodas sodas anyway and uh, he was i asked uh, this person like like uh, hey what do you like basic question so i'm in i'm in marketing what about you and he's like no i don't work i was like and he w- he underlined that he that was his statement he was proud of it i don't do work i don't so i've never done work something like that so I didn't, and it was a bit hostile, maybe just a bit. And uh, I just understood. And that's not the per- first person I've met or seen that you can see that person doesn't work because it's uh, against his, I don't know, ideology or something like that. And yes, he's, he, re- rece- he, he will receive monthly pay. He will also get a bonus uh, addition to that for his apartment and basic needs. So. Yes, individuality is important, but a lot of things, me as a semi, well, quite capitalist as well, I don't agree with. It just doesn't fit in my mind. And when talking about Russian, when people think it's so communist because it's, it's because of the movies and the media and the movies affect Finnish people's minds a lot and, uh, and it's certain narrative. So they think that everything is bad there. And I can say in, well, of course, maybe there's corruption, not just maybe there is, but uh, then otherwise it's quite capitalistic. Money is important. If you work, you get a lot of money and you drive fancier cars than anybody in this town, but, uh, and you are able to make it and you can actually quite fast build your, co- co- your business. That's what I understand. I discussed with this one coffee shop maker, he plans to open five new places each in each uh, year and he's been doing like only a few years now and it's not possible here you have to start slowly a little cafe maybe you earn just enough you know and there you can actually if you're if you're a hustler you're able to achieve a lot sure we have one of those here as well so basically if you're a hustler you have advantage over other fins Sure, because it's not even a typical behavior for fin- Finns. They're really low key, and uh, uh, I'm not talking about bad hustling or uh, illegal one. Yeah, but I mean, just but, being uh, active, you know, moving forward fast and so forth. Right? Yeah, people tend to be here. Of course, businessmen is our businessmen. It's that's a whole different breed, but uh, most of the people here are quite like low key. If they agreed or something, they're very polite. So basically, if you're if you're a businessman and you, so to speak, want to cut the line, it's a big possibility that nobody will say to you, not in the physical actual line for a toilet, for example, or mm-hmm. even or in business, because it's not polite. So if you're able to hustle, yes, you're, you can beat a lot of competitors here. But Interesting. It, but my Finnish side of it also says that my mom, that's um, I don't want to be promoting hustling because I'm I'm also kind of uh, Finnish in that way. I'm the polite one as well. N- I'm not a mix promoting. Of both. I, 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 I yeah. think hustling is actually good. It's like following your dream, being very aggressive in doing mm-hmm. something, uh, not give up, that type of yeah. thing. Look, cool. So you consider yourself both Russian and Finnish, right? It's uh, yes, I, I am w- both. I have Ingrian Finn blood in me, 
and then Russian, which is even deeper. It's, it's like my, my soul is Russian. Uh, but I can use both. Sometimes I'm more thin, according to people, and sometimes I'm like Russian. So I, I'm in, it's my life story. I'm in the middle of both, like exactly in the both cultures. I understand and, I, and, and, and connect in both, but both can, both nations can feel that there's something else in me. So I, I guess I can say yes, I, I consider myself Russian and, and Finnish, but maybe slightly we're, more Russian after all. We are so alike, because I also consider myself like dual mm -hmm. cultural, a hybrid, a mutant, whatever, you, you know, yes. you can call me whatever. I feel like I am, uh, I was born and raised in Russia, I'm Russian definitely, obviously. But I also am partially American because I got to the United States at fairly early age and I started my life, adult life in the United mm -hmm. States. So uh, I was born and raised in Russia, but then born and raised as a professional in the USA. So yeah. kind of a few. So I, I understand what you're saying. I understand very much. And then I understand it, it can be confusing at times. And... I understand that you feel differently in your soul. I also have Russian soul. Yeah. And that's something that most of people might not understand unless you've been, you have Russian connection. But in Finland, by actually, people want to hear that you're become Finnish, so to speak. And then uh, with, and because this is something I've been thinking about like throughout my life and I had to think about. So, and I'm just asking, what's being Finnish? Well, modern Finnish, and I just tell them, just like being in, in some different skin color, etc., you can be Finnish, uh, not just because you have a Finnish passport, but uh, just because you have combined the two cultures, you're an active uh, individual of the society, you pay taxes, you work, you're Finnish if you feel like it, period. But in Finland, especially if you have a Russian background, you're not considered easily, you're not considered Finnish. And I have a lot of trolls, not trolls, there's uh, some people, critics commenting all the time that's like, like in a negative way that you're Russian you're, or you're not Finnish or just stay there because I don't agree with something with the narrative that they've been hearing all their lives. And for example, and that loses my Finnish hood. Yeah, and that's uh, and it's bad because it mostly concerns Russian. So I have to be openly agreeing with uh, so-called uh, facts, facts about and for example, and being uh, Russian negative or, or not just critic, criticism different or critic negative or just like de deny my Russian background. And this I now know some Russian people have done that in politics, etc. Then they become like the real Finns. And it's a, it's a sad thing. It doesn't have to be that way. Because modern Russian, being modern Russian is also being maybe even black and speaking the language and living there. Or same thing, like being a me member of society with your background. Or if you don't even have a Russian or Finnish blood in you, you don't need to have that. It's um, I Igor, I, again, I understand completely. And yeah. moreover, I'll tell you a couple personal stories. Yeah, please. Uh, I think this, what you just said is called nationalism and it it is present in both russia and in the united states russians are also very sensitive on some things if you go against the narrative okay mm -hmm. i won't go any further i think you know what i mean but yeah um that's that that is present in russia and in the united states it's a free country people are allowed to have our opinions and everything and in general that is so but there are there is also some degree of nationalism there my personal story i was living in the united states when the usa led the coalition so-called international coalition and invaded afghanistan oh no iraq. sorry iraq <laughs> yeah. iraq yes and <clears throat> Everyone was so patriotic about not the invasion of another country, but about support our troops. Yes. Everyone wore this uh, little beige, this little tape 
uh, on cars, on houses, everyone was crazy about support our troops, support mm -hmm. our troops. And people were saying, hey, we, we, we're trying to liberate Iraq. We're trying to uh, bring freedom to Iraqi people, right? Yeah. And I didn't quite believe that. I was I had lived in the USA for seven and a half years at the time. And I was pretty much assimilated. I spoke English. I had a wife, American citizen. I had a kid. I was a, a good member of community, local community. Everyone knew me. And I was brave enough to voice a different opinion. I said, well, you know what? I think there are commercial interests more than uh, trying to bring freedom to Iraqi people. And people what did to me what you just said. They're like, shh, you don't understand yeah. because you yeah. weren't born in this country. You don't know our <laughs> you don't know our values, you know. And I felt what you just said. I felt like you have to yeah. go along some narratives to be included. Okay. And if you don't, then you have a chance of uh being excluded. Yeah. So I understand very much. Uh, life isn't perfect. Mm -hmm. you know, some good in every country, and there's some bad. There's no perfect place in the world, I believe. You know. Um, True. I would it's like all. To, it's all about. It's all about here where you feel good and and what's uh, what's important to you. Yes. Yes. A comment, uh, short comment before we go on about that, uh, that a lot of Russians, by the way, want to live in Scandinavia type of thing. It depends because I know that most of Russians or a lot of St. Petersburgian visit Finnish and, and I hope the tourism will get back. Uh, but uh, a lot of people don't understand what it's like to live actually in Finland because they can see the only the certain certain stories. For example, what I just said might sound like hey that's perfect right but uh, it comes then comes along a lot of different stuff i just arrived to helsinki i can tell you a lot of stories about the good things you can google them but i can tell the other thing that is not reported the first thing i see is like uh narco narcotics or like uh, a drug user like r right next to some children and the totally blacking out looking really dangerous a lot of those that's the first thing you see and there's just like, there's loads of them i didn't see now in st petersburg one bit of that because everybody is behaving properly in metro it's even safer there but you have to actually maybe live in that country to understand it better I will tell you a personal story about my colleague who lived in uh, in Sweden for 10 years. Yeah. A long time ago. He was a um, highly skilled professional and executive, and he was invited by a f Swedish company to move to um, a city in, fin in Sweden. I think it's called Finspong. Uh, mm -hmm. Anyway, there was a large manufacturing of energy equipment there. And he came back to Russia after 10 years, and it was picture perfect. He had a house, he had a great job, he was a member Good of the salary. community. Salary, fantastic, you know, benefits, picture perfect for any Russian, you know. And um, we were asking him, like, well, I wasn't because <laughs> I had been in his shoes before, but other people were asking him in my presence, why did you move back like yeah you had everything worked out there it's life is perfect and he answered this still remember the answer he said you know what you're right life is perfect you have a house with a fireplace you have people you converse with you, you know people you meet once a week um, you, your house is surrounded by the woods it's perfect it's very high quality you have good money you have benefits you have car and everything yeah but then you sit by the fire on long winter nights and you feel like you want a hole yeah and that's why i he said that's why i moved back you know yeah the personal discomfort inside huge discomfort that's what drove him back to russia yeah, and he's still in Russia. It's been 15 years. 
and he's enjoying life, loving it. Good example. So you living in because being uh, quite critical about the uh, the world or re or uh, being real about the situation right now. Do I understand you correctly that you live in Russia and because you're not one of those who actually, if you had the choice, you would move back to USA, for example, or or Western countries. If it's, I don't know if it's a too personal question, but because m many might think that you're so pro-Western, you know, that's that means usually for normal people, like uh, normal audi um, auditorium, that hey, he he doesn't like Russia at all. That is you know? that is a mistake. I am not pro-Western. I am not pro-Russian. Uh, basically, I will tell you right now what I am pro. <laughs> Yeah, I did with those uh, uh, marks. <laughs> I am Russian. I was born and raised in Russia. Mm -hmm. My first language is Russian. My mom and dad, grand grandparents, uh, all come from Russia. Therefore, my heart is Russian. I absolutely love my country. Um, but this is a love of a person who was born and raised someplace you know so love to motherland so to speak but mm -hmm. what i am pro towards is god family freedom and hard work these are my core values and you can tell that this is the western values or the russian values or whatever i don't care but this is what i care in life about god i'm a well I can't say I'm a very religious, um, I'm Eastern Orthodox, but I deeply believe in God. I pray and I have connection, a very strong connection with God. My family comes first. I absolutely think that uh, society should be free and people must have freedom. And I think that hard work is the key to happiness. And that's pretty much it. And I can't say I'm pro-Western, pro-Russian, I don't like Russia, I don't like the West, you know, it, it's, it's different, okay, I am pro my values, that's pretty much it, I loved living in Russia very much, I loved living in the United States, I absolutely love America, I think that Russia is my mother, motherland, and I think America is my father, fatherland, <laughs> yeah. so two parents, because I really like both countries, and um, I wish I could live in one country for one week and then another country and I just would move yeah. back and forth. <laughs> um, and um, the only thing, I, I made a conscious choice of coming back to Russia after having spent nine years, close to nine years in the United States. Mm -hmm. It's, how do I say that? How can I not like or love Russia if... I made a conscious choice to live my life, very comfortable life. I, I didn't have a discomfort of living in America, okay? Everything was absolutely perfect. I just, I wanted to go back to my motherland. I had this tingling feeling in my heart, you know, that eventually brought me back. So uh, if someone's saying I don't like Russia, I'm pro-Western, not really. That person is it's mistaken. A, it's the a, only I, thing... Yeah. The only thing is that can keep me away from Russia or drive me away from Russia is that the political situation becomes that way that, uh, you know, it's not bearable anymore. Yeah. It's, just it, a it's, it's a recent phenomenon. I mean, before Russia was absolutely fine politically. Yeah. I think just the Westerners like to use those words because they, they cannot understand better. And they, uh, they need to hear this long explanation, maybe, to somehow understand it. But usually it's like you're pro or you're against. And I'm, for example, easily... Black, black or I'm, white, right? You're yes, black or yeah. white. And, and I just... And I love enjoying myself in, in, in Russia, St. Petersburg. And because my videos are having this good vibe, 
and I'm uh, so they're just always selling hey you're a pro Russian in a like as if and it's like in Finland on the west it means negative it means it's it's an insult imagine that not just we discuss as a matter as you're pro or you're against no if you're against that means it's an insult Igor I understand completely yeah. because you've been following my videos and I tell about things that have been unfolding in Russia in the recent four months in the recent time and the yeah. things are mostly negative but it's not like I'm negative towards Russia I'm just showing what's yeah. around me okay and I see lots of negative stuff happening and then people who watch Russians who watch me they're saying why are you paying attention to that you're against Russia you know because you're saying that the economy is going down but it is going down like what can I do yeah. What can I say? I don't lie. I just merely show what's around me. So I understand you completely. So Igor, yeah. I would like to develop on something that you started talking about already. My yeah. next question is, what do Finns think of Russia and the Russians in general? You know, Finland has had uh, uh, a long history with Russia. Very long. Uh, being a neighbor, neighboring country or uh, a, a region part of Sweden, but as a as a as an old nation though, and uh, and it's it's a huge question. Once again, I, I try to like somehow put it into a, into a, a package in a nutshell. The short answer, unfortunately, would be that uh, did you say the Russian people or Russia? Is there a well, difference? Both. I I ask both. both. Okay, Russian well. people and Russia, but if you think that it's significant to divide Russian people and Russia, let's do that. What do they think of Russia and yeah. what do they think of Russian people? Historically, for the past over a hundred years, uh, Finnish people have uh, thought about Russia and, uh, and Russians, in my view, and negatively, because there are certain events that have shaped uh, the Finnish, Finns uh, ideology and prejudices, no prejudices. And, uh, and I have actually started my own series in a study in Russian Finland in a positive way, by the way, which is like rarity. And I have like studied what have been, what's positive and still visible in Finnish culture and world from the Russian uh, time. But the history official, I, I'd start my history with Russia uh, and Finns since 1720 and 1740. That's when the so-called Old Finland was taken from Sweden. And that's an area going through like uh, city of Kotka. It's like the Eastern Finland basically. And that's the area that then belonged to uh, through Peter, Peter the Great's uh, wars to, to Russia. And uh, then the second major part was 1809 when the whole Finland, Sweden lost whole Finland, current Finland to Russia. And it became the autonomous parts of, uh, as a grand duchy of uh, Russian empire. And this is the first huge step towards Finnish independence because the Russian Tsar Alexander I gave the first autonomy, the right to decide locally. Uh, Russians did that to Finnish. Then um, there was a period when Alexander II, two Tsars later, sorry for historical, but you have to understand this concept. I'll get no, back fine. to the current time. I'll try to. Uh, no, 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 it's fine. In. Just give. All give right. Because most people don't really know what the history between Russia and Finland is. Yeah, even in Finland, they don't know a lot of this stuff. And I have a theory for that. But anyway, Alexander II, two Tsars later, gave them even more. They gave, he gave them their own money, uh, even more autonomy, etc. Uh, then there was periods when uh, Alexander III, which is also a great uh, Tsar, he actually started tightening up a little bit. And especially then the Nikolai II uh, tightened the grip because of bad, uh, well, the people who surrounded him were telling him that to do so. But he tightened the grip and uh, made them actually took back a lot of stuff that was given. And, peop and Finnish people's, um, um, and Finnish people's, Finns uh, memory, national memories, somehow maybe starts from this period. Uh, 
So from the first negative, when Nikolai II made them to speak Russian, well, wanted to make speak Russian, he took away their own army, which was actually created, by the way, by Russian Tsar earlier. So he took that and made it part of Russian army, you know, and that type of stuff. We won't go into the details, but the national history somehow begins, feels like it starts from the negative. Then there was revolution, all right, in Russia. And because of the revolution, Finns became independent country, which, which journey started, like I said, in 1809. They were ready for it. They was actually building it. But this is the, they felt the right time to move. And what is interesting is that every time something big or like uh, negatively big uh, ha happens in Russia, that's when Finns uh, like to uh, work in the shades, so to speak. Russia is busy with the revolution, independence. Russia is busy in Ukraine, NATO. We'll get to that. <laughs> but uh, the first negative. And of course, the biggest thing that shapes Finnish, Finns people's minds and attitudes is unfortunately the war in 1939, the Winter War, when Soviet Union, led by the way by the Georgian, which they don't know, it's always Russians attack. Anyway, that's when they started. So basically this war and then the continue, continuation war from 1940 to 44, that's the biggest uh, traumatizing event uh, currently in Russia, in Finland. Mm -hmm. You know, I will, I will interrupt you. We, Please in, do. in Soviet Union, we did, know, we did not know that the war happened actually yeah. between Soviet Union and Finland. We were kept in the dark and only in late 80s, we learn about uh, that actually Soviet Union invaded Finland and many Russians did not believe it. Yeah. They said, you know what, it, it's impossible. We yeah. are peaceful people. We never invade anyone. And there were pure facts. And actually my mom, I was, remember talking to her, I said, mom, look, this is what they taught us at school. And this is the official paper. And she was so hurt by the fact that Soviet Union attacked. Um, yeah someone she refused to talk about it she shut down she said i want to talk about it. this is so painful for me to hear that uh, i don't that, and that she mm. hasn't talked i tried over the years a few times she just refuses to talk about it that's how deep of a tragedy to russian people was to learn that soviet union actually attacked finland i understand that it's because the war this the war wasn't so good in 1939, it was supposed to be a, like an easy win. A lot of, I think, one million Russians, uh, Soviet Union people died. There was also Ukrainian front, I guess. I'm not sure. <laughs> but anyway, the situation is that you know how deeply infected the, uh, the, uh, uh, the Great Patriotic War to f Russian minds. You know, you understand that as a Russian person. It's like it's the most traumatic, most important thing. The most yep. important day is Victory Day, etc. So it's the same thing for Finns, except that basically they didn't win, except they get to kept, keep the most important, the independence, because they basically lost the war. But they, the narrative is that we actually won the war because we, uh, the Finns, uh, maintained their independence. And this is the narrative that's been like up kept until this day. Which but is you know what? I actually think so too. I think they're right. I think they um, won by keeping the independence. Uh, sh sure. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not not saying that uh, I'm not, but I'm just saying that. But this is the most thing that has uh, this, describes Russia until this day. And unfortunately, the me uh, the stuff that happens actually just fortifies that uh, perception. And like for 20 years, then there was no reason to think so. And now they say, aha, we told you so. There was, we were ready for them. We were preparing for 80 years. And basically since 1944, even though you said that Russia is somehow thought of uh, as a partner and then somehow, yes, but Finnish people have always reserves uh, reserves against Russia in their mind. They do business because they have to, but I think most of people don't want to. Uh, the most positive people are on the eastern side of it in an economical sense, but politically the whole country is quite against because they have been, not that uh, they are right, but they have been preparing for that. Living in Finland, I haven't seen one week or days that, that had, didn't have something negative about Russia since I was living in Finland, basically like that. So. Yes, the, the war happened, 
but that's the thing they like they uh, they're running with all the time and maintaining that maximum negativeness and now it's even mm -hmm. bigger because stuff happening in ukraine uh let me tell you something russians in this case are so misinformed because here in russia i mean i was born i grew mm -hmm. up and i have general understanding of, of the neighbors in our allies and partners and uh, opponents and so to speak mm -hmm. there's a general understanding that finland is our friend and uh cold friend but that's due to uh northern scandinavian mentality it's not yeah. due to not like in russia but it's friend that jumps doesn't jump up and down and joy so to speak but friend overall and a partner business partner because back in the ussr finland was the closest um from the capitalistic world closest country from the capitalistic world to actually do business with the ussr you know it was neutral towards towards the soviet union it never threatened the soviet union it always was like uh, kind of like towards the soviet union oriented but, so to speak but they I, I understand I understand what you're saying. I understand where that feeling is coming from. They were just uh, trying to cope with large and hostile enemy in their eyes. And correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. Uh, Somehow, but like, in yeah, Russia, we, we considered that as friendship and being close to one another, be, being partners. Okay, so hmm. that's why I'm saying that. <laughs> judging from your words, I think that Russians are grossly misinformed about uh attitude of finnish people towards russia uh maybe some diplomat would correct me but uh i'm not in a diplomatic business anymore. you know what we're not yeah. diplomats here i'm ex sorry ex we're just ex exactly. uh, two regular people standing uh firmly on the ground with our feet and there's uh no political correctness here we're just at least I, I, I don't I, I speak as it is and i also yeah. would like you to do the same so we definitely know no diplomats the thing is that uh, they uh, they have been partners because of uh, because they had well not partners I mean they have been neutral friends because they had to the geopolitical reason uh, Finland even though during the Soviet times uh, had to be a somehow friendly country but uh, but on the uh, citizen level the, the thing I told you about the uh, the memories they have maintained until then and they still maintain it now and and it's and and I would add personally that I think it's also maintained per, like intentionally because Finnish people uh, they tend to go against each other historically being anti-Russian some or Russophobic in my I would add that word that's something that they uh, that unites people. It first time united after the civil war, 1918, uh, after uh, after the independence. It first they were really separated. So the first time they got together was 39 against Russia, uh, Soviet Union, and uh, this mentality I think it's maybe politicized somehow because it's uh, it's good for them to keep them against because it somehow focuses people together but uh, I would actually say something uh, Konstantin that uh, even though Russia Finland has been maybe uh, somehow a partner country in some levels but not as on on that scale that you mentioned that's uh, that's the under Russian understanding of yes Finnish position. I exactly said just that yeah. that is general understanding of Russians yeah. towards Finland and that's why many many tourists may be amazed that they're not received them like if you come to let's say I don't know Belarus you're not like hey Russians hey hello it's like ah, those Russians it's just like the Boney M song uh, and that's <laughs> and they come they they don't Russian people are also cool with it I mean for example when you Russians don't hate Germans that's what I said uh, it's been telling to people it's not healthy to be living in that old memories all the time that's my problem because I want to bring the cultures closer personally so it's not good for them to be living those me war memories being born in 2005 for example a young mm -hmm. kid so for example russians don't hate uh, even though the war patriotic war against the nazi germany is and almost russia uh, soviet union against finland is on the same traumatizing level 
people don't hate Germany in Russia that way. But uh, even though people are really anti-government, especially like really like Russophobic level, uh, they have like statistics saying that uh, actually that people are not against Russians. I personally don't agree with that. I cannot because I see daily that uh, this uh, Russophobe attitude against maybe even the language, etc. But officially, I have to say, statistics say that Finnish don't, people um, uh, separate the government and the Russian people officially. Mm -hmm. I don't see that, but that's what it is. Um, let me share my experience with Finnish people, with the Finns. Yeah. My experience with the Finnish is quite positive. I worked for a company that was a joint venture with a Scandinavian group. We actually worked with the Finnish office and we had very close relationships with the, the Finnish employees, the Finnish managers. The company was um, mostly Swedish and Finnish. It was like a Scandinavian engineering holding and met quite a few Finns, fantastic people. Once you get to a personal level with them, they're just good people in general. That's my understanding, my experience. Okay. I still uh, keep in touch and we're still friends with some of them. What happened? We are not a joint venture with that holding anymore. We split apart so to speak i've been to finland before i really not 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 like like you said not the proper visit but just passing through but from what i saw very good people and uh, one people, of my yeah. mods is a finnish <laughs> harry potman he's a great guy fantastic moderator and just a fantastic person so overall I haven't had one single issue or a problem or a grudge with the Finns. That's my opinion. Mm -hmm. And you probably wouldn't unless you like... Uh... Would d dive deeper into the society, so to speak, and, and live inside, inside Finland, right? Uh, yeah, okay. or talk politics with a different narrative. For example, I did I try this... talking politics. I did. And I did, I did try. And you know what happened? Couple people, they just wouldn't talk about it. Ah, okay. <laughs> they but didn't want to argue, guy, they fine. wanted to you're be nice. They're like, let's not talk about it. Uh, you know what's, uh, by the way, about this um, partnership with Russia also, that's uh, important is to know that uh, even, as soon as fin Finland had the opportunity, by the way, and this is something like uh, that tells us uh, a little bit more about the true maybe nature of this partnership or collaboration is that as soon as uh, Soviet Union was um, was what destroyed well beca became no more uh, they started their process in joining the EU so once again when something happens in Russia something big Finland makes it moves so in the chase, so to speak. So this is like... And that basic. is my next question. Because they join in EU, they have also explained to those who oppose the NATO membership, which has been up front since the 90s also in the discussions, and mostly people have been against it. There's at least like 50-60% against it, 20, maximum 30 support it, and there's like less than 20 like who don't cannot decide yet. And this is what the polls have been saying uh, for now. But anyway, and because the, this EU has been used as a sort of a gateway to NATO, because they, hey, we are part of EU. Most of the countries in the EU are part of NATO. We, are be we share now the European, so-called European values. So by being that said, we are basically, we are already aligned with the West. This is the speech that has been narration that's been going on for I don't know since the 90s, especially in the 20, 2000th century. But the thing is, to to us, to Russians, you are the West. You, yeah. You you are not aligned. You are the West. You're like as Western as it gets, you know. Yes, it is part of the West, but uh, I mean politically, and uh, mm. and true. It's understandable that it is part of the West and the Western systems, 
but it's been used as a weapon or as an explanation. So, so we have this, now we have to go to NATO or, you know, that you don't have any choice actually. And this is like the propaganda thing, of course. By the way, Igor, do yeah. Finns like drinking tea? Like I said, the cultural difference is so huge that not on the same level at all. There are people who are tea lovers, but Finland is mostly known for coffee drinking. Like, uh, I think uh, the, uh, Finland is number one in, the, uh, um, in drinking coffee in the world. Drinking coffee in the world, okay. Yeah, amounts, like uh, amount-wise. Interesting. I love, personally, love drinking tea and uh, drink it all the time during my streams, during my videos, you know. I wish a tea company would sponsor me, but no, I'm not sponsored. I just like tea in general. <laughs> There were some companies from Finland, I think even may, might be even now, I think Nordquist used to be, and then there's other ones also. They were sold in Prisma, which is closed now, which left the Finnish Russian market, but there are a few, there were a few tea companies as well, but not, I think, in the Russian chain stores anymore. I would say that Finnish struggle with growing tea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <You know? laughs> exactly. Yeah, they bring it from elsewhere, of course. <laughs> Snow tea or iced tea. But hey, I have to promote uh, that uh, Finland is actually for a small country. It's doing really great. They're they're very innovative. They have like uh, a great gin, for example, created like renowned across the world. Gin uh, as a drink. Yes, gin, gin, yeah, gin, uh, gin alcohol. Uh, I think it's Kura Distillery. Gin is great, for example. Then there's uh, they're really good creating coffee. Like Paulik is a great company. Uh, in, is Paulik uh, Finnish? Yes. Well, it's the the roots are Swedish Finnish, but they are considered Finns hundred percent. Wow, I didn't know yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. So uh, there's a lot of great stuff. And sportsmen in sports for a five million country of five million, they they they're really doing great. Have to that proves what I said, what I think about Finnish, fantastic country and fantastic people, really remarkable. Yeah, what I would like to add is like positiveness towards this huge, great neighbor, through understanding. Not understanding maybe this current situation, but understanding on a cultural level, and it lacks fully, and and it would Finland would uh, gain uh, so much more as a small country next to a huge potential next door. Even the that's why many companies went to Russia because in Saint Petersburg, especially mostly in Saint Petersburg, then secondly to Moscow, and the, the, and the further you get, the less people companies are interested. But a market of 5.5 million is like a one and a half hour drive by train from Finland. That's like double the uh, double the size of the country. So this is just to put things in perspective. I don't know when we get back, though, to that My situation. My friends in St. Petersburg, I have an ex-partner who lived there, and quite a few friends, they used to drive to the border of Finland, Finland and Russia, to do food shopping. Yes, yes. Because Finnish, Finnish uh, food products are so much superior to Russian ones. Used to be. Now it's, it's, it's even more so, but it used to be. And they would just drive across the border. There would be a supermarket right after the border, and they would sh do shopping and then come back. Would would be good for a week. Yes, that's that's a fact. What you said, the quality is actually really great. Salmon is brought, uh, cheese is something they bring, and uh, for example, and lots of other stuff. And and I always always wondered in those small shops that sell Finnish products, only Finnish, which is usually often not even Finnish. It might be Swedish or you just bought from Finland. It might be German, like from Lidl, from Lidl grocery store. But mm -hmm. I I when I come to Russia and I try to come as often as I can. I buy <laughs> the most Russian stuff I can. And if it's bad quality, I actually enjoy it because it's like, well, the grass is greener on the other side, you know. I think the Russian food is just more tasty. Not talking about the salmon and cheese, though. 
Mm -hmm. We can have this debate on the second part when this becomes a huge hit, this video. <laughs> <laughs> the great cheese talk. Yes. Well, I would like to get to more serious talk now. Yeah. February 24th of 2022. The event has that has changed a lot in Russia and worldwide. Did attitude towards Russia and the Russians, well, what, towards Russia change after mm. this event? And if yes, then how? Um, a lot of things changed because on 24th happened uh, a lot of things that uh, which was uh, on, uh, that people couldn't believe. I couldn't believe either, actually. Uh, was people asking me i couldn't believe this. either but i guess we just got used to different i don't know reality somehow i told you about the uh, certain really strong prejudices because of history which has been maintained like forever and even currently for new generations and new generation people this is like maybe uh too much of a generalization but uh even the new uh, younger younger people teenagers might f felt possibly negativeness towards russian at least russian government at minimum before even experience in russia through media so when this happened all of those uh, prejudices and some level Rus russophobia which is being denied <laughs> uh, has increased a lot not maybe russophobia according to statistics but the the negative thoughts against uh, towards the russian aggressiveness and towards the russian uh, threat that threat that's what they've been saying one of the things first was that happened uh, from a um, defense perspective is that uh, they started to talk about nato as, as soon as they could because note nato is been always on some level peri periodically it's always on somehow on the news. It's always one of the most, imp uh, one of the main um, election time thoughts for president or in uh, parliamentary uh, elections for people. What do you think about NATO? Yes or no? It's always like that. So of course they grabbed and run with it as soon as they could, because I think it's perhaps possibly already in February or at least in March, uh, early March, they started talking about this, what to do is Finland threat, etc. Because the same thoughts already happened in 2014 since Crimea happened and not one bullet was shot there. And they already talked in, talking about this uh, aggressive expansion of Russia. And of course, if you think about like how the media and how people's mind works, work, uh, they have been prepared, they have been hearing negative things all their life and now this happens. You don't need to do anything, it's just, uh, it just, I don't, it happens so fast, like NATO, yes or no, secret discussions somewhere and then the, uh, the secret, uh, I don't know, advisory board to the government uh, pop, I guess they said that yes, it's a great thing, we should do that, it's the best choice for us now. It went on there to the president, which uh, one of the last things that uh, he has power on is uh, foreign policy. <laughs> Was there a referendum on June in NATO? Good question, that's what I was getting to. So everything was so smooth and oiled up, so no referendum, even though before this, all we have been saying that referendum is really important. Uh, there's nothing's gonna happen against referendum and uh, that's and that's why they always been polling it. They, ha they, they have polls regularly about NATO. And now, of course, they did a poll. And I guess this poll was somehow official poll. I, th I don't know, was it 2,000 people that they asked? Sure, there were probably many sources that did it. But uh, that was enough now because, I don't know, democracy, I guess. Now, somehow, all the things I've been discussing just faded away. Like, of everybody is supporting. Yeah, sure. And by the way, I know those pro numbers are probably true. Was it like 75% support NATO is like unheard of? Bling. The cat is sounding there. Stop. That's okay. <laughs> it's okay. It, bring, it, it adds character to our conversation. <laughs> Gosh, you're in Finland, man. You, 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 you're too cruel to your cat. You don't feed your cat, you know. <laughs> <laughs> he, he wants to go out. He just was out. He wants to go back. He's an okay, outdoor so cat. But the anyway, cat is fed. 
Yeah. Good, good to know. <laughs> yeah, it is. I'm, I'm personally against NATO because I think I understand Russian, uh, Russian side of this uh, d defense side, the ideology, Finland being close to uh, to Saint Petersburg, etc. They need to have this Finland uh, neutral. But Finland, because of the fear of the attacks and uh, things otherwise, of course, and there's no mutual language there's never been i think it's always been somehow very diplomatic official maybe under kekkonen you know this president kekkonen that was maybe during his time because he understood the russian mentality but uh, we don't have was no he the president in. like 30 years or something yeah yeah finnish dictator so to speak mm -hmm. <laughs> and the only one i think the best possible best um, defense for finland or the best defense guarantee is real true friendship with russia but i'm i understand i'm being really minority here so uh, i don't understand that why now when being this discussion about how important it is to have a referendum on it it goes so easy without one and nobody says a word you know, this is like, mm -hmm. uh, I think it's like two-faced. Let me tell you a perspective of a Russian. Yes. You know, in my country, it was an understanding that Finland and Sweden are neutral countries. And they actually refrained from joining NATO. They didn't want to join NATO. So what you just told me about Finland has been, ha had been talking about joining for a long time, that's a surprise. Because again, in Russia, understanding that that you know those the the Finns didn't want to because just like what you said, the best defense against Russia is being the friend of Russia, and Russians always considered Finnish friends. Yeah, uh, probably still do. Um, mm -hmm. It's just things are changing so fast. I don't. It's on the list of unfriendly friend, unfriendly uh, countries, though. What what's no. that? Uh, uh, it's under it's in the list of unfriendly countries now. Though. Yeah, just just about any other country is now <laughs> all of a sudden you know used to be friendly now unfriendly. So that's a different yeah. talk. Okay, yeah. different conversation. But uh, uh, so Russians thought that the Finnish deliberately didn't want to join NATO, and all of a sudden you know bada bing bada boom, within days uh, NATO expanded. Forget about Ukraine. One of the biggest uh, points about conducting this military operation to refrain Ukraine becoming NATO, because Ukraine is right next door to Russia, okay? How about Finland? How about Sweden? So, um, in Russia, there was a state of shock when Sweden and Finland announced that they would join NATO. And there's not nothing Russia could do about that. And obviously, you know, Finland and Sweden are sovereign countries and they can make decisions. That was my understanding, and I think it's safe to say it was general understanding that there was some kind of referendum in Finland, but you just said that there was none. No, no, no. And it just shows me, and, and the Russian authorities, they were dismayed. They were just in complete, they caught surprised by, by this willingness on Finland and Sweden. It just tells me a couple things, that Russians are still being kept in the dark. Because no one said that there was no referendum in Finland. And the second is, Russian politicians, by being caught by this thing by surprise, it shows they are not doing a good job, basically. Mm -hmm. Because they don't understand what different outcomes of certain actions are and can't be. They don't have a long-term plan. They don't have strategy, but they have tactics, and that's not good politics, yeah. in, in my eyes, of course, that's my opinion. And um, so what, what, what you just said goes against my understanding of the situation, Finland. Very was, interesting, very interesting. I don't Thank understand you. why we didn't have this, just to underline there, maybe somehow the inten, uh, intentional in, intentional purposes with all this i have a well you can call me a conspiracy theorist and you might but so why we didn't have this definitive decision when there was like 55 percent against nato uh like during the polls and uh and now when the polls say show otherwise it's like definitive decision 
And you know, before that, actually, because the strong, political strong in, in many, in most, actually, even uh, personal political, uh, if you ask certain politicians, most of the politicians were somehow positive or refrain, restrain themselves from answering. That was the best choice to do. If you're against it, many people didn't say. Same thing, by the way, the polls. Uh, when you asked, we had uh, news coverage about people saying that, what do you think about NATO? There was those who were 100% for and was like, and few were like basically against, but because now the narrative is so negative towards Russia. So basically you cannot say no because otherwise you're possibly like pro-Russian somehow, which is totally And that's not a good place to be. Yeah, and that's, right and now, people right. used to start to say, uh, I don't, no comments. Same thing I hear, by the way, in Russian, these, um, in Russian um, videos that some YouTubers do, that some people who are against uh, support, they say no comments <laughs> or against. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so this is what I'm just wondering, why there's no decision making before that and now it's like really fast. Possibly because, you know, maybe on some level, if they would put this to polls, there were a certain time that they, the, they, they think that Russia could influence people's minds through like, uh, you know, targeting the media and that type of thing. This, they are very suspicious about everything. So maybe this was this, there was this case that people actually would be turned just like, for example, allegedly Hillary Clinton thing that affected Trump. For example, that the Russia, it's the Russian mm -hmm. uh, hackers, mm -hmm. you know, there was maybe this type of thing. But it, there's no explanation for not using de democracy. Igor, I will not call you the conspiracy theorist. I don't call anyone anything. I respect everyone's opinion. And your opinion is definitely very interesting to me. My last question is, you recently visited St. Petersburg. Did you see any change in attitude from Russians to Finnish, perhaps more hostile or anything like that? Any changes? Just yesterday came from St. Petersburg and I like to visit like every few weeks. And, uh, and this is actually what I film. Like I like to just go out and tell my, in a vlogging way, show the awesome city and combine it with maybe some commentary not too political, but um, just telling what I see, kind of what you do, but uh, maybe not so much content in speaking, uh, the mm -hmm. actual thing. And uh, I should and do this, that less of that speaking, I know. <laughs> no, you shouldn't. Uh, I'm a marketer. Uh, when, you, when something works, don't change anything. And <laughs> you're doing great. I should actually Thank do something you. else. But uh, uh, the fact is that I don't see actually any difference like in the, in the normal life in St. Petersburg. I don't know what's in the outskirts of it, but uh, it's normal. Life is like somehow surreal coming from Finland, which is like in a semi hysterical situation for four months about the about Russia. And then, then there's something else, other uh, dr dramatic events. But especially Russia, it's always on the front page. Now it's been actually going down and they probably need to do something more, even more, uh, bring up even more horrible things. That's what, that's my thing, thinking. They need to bring something even worse for the front page because otherwise people are getting bored. And I think that uh, they need to maintain it. Otherwise people forget Ukraine, you know. But uh, I don't see any difference in, in the normal life there. People actually, I don't hear people say anything about the situation. They have, it's a quite surrealistic, surrealistic bubble. Of course, these talks are probably in the, in the privacy somewhere. That's what in that's the, like, the kitchens, like, in the Russian yeah, kitchens. Exactly. Just like in the Soviet times. And yeah, um, we're going back to the Soviet times true. real, real fast. Yes. And um, uh, towards Finnish, well, there's not many, many Finnish people anywhere. Uh, I guess there's only few probably and we don't hear about them. I think I, I don't have the statistics because I don't do these interviews that somebody might do, uh, some other YouTubers do, but uh, I think nothing has changed towards Finnish people because Finnish brand has been until now. Do, can you imagine that 92 or something, 93% of, of St. Petersburgians thought positively towards Finland, according to yearly uh, statistics. Basically, you can say everybody thinks Russia, Finland is great. 
products, country, people. That's what I said. That's what yeah. I said. Everyone still thinks that, well, yeah. And I these think are hardly thinks that Finland is great. And you, you work in, the, in business, you know that uh, these type of, um, what's the word for it? It's, um, when you, it's basically brand awareness, kind of. We are talking mm -hmm. about Finnish brand awareness. And brand awareness things change very, very slowly. So even though, even the Finland news, uh, I think it hasn't been like the main news unless like few days maybe. And then it's died out, correct? Correct me if I'm wrong in Russia. It's the NATO. You mean the whole narrative about Finland about joining Finland. NATO? Yeah. Is it? Is is it? It so was like short-lived. You're short absolutely true. Yeah. And I think the news are not uh, news not covering is yeah. very artificial because it's a huge loss to Russia. Yeah. And okay. they don't show the losses of Russia. Uh, yeah. On the news, I mean, on the Russian news. So basically, uh, I'd say I'd say my strong. Uh, Specialist opinion is that nothing has changed mostly for uh, towards Finnish people on the on the human level. That's good. No, that's good to know. It's very yeah. Good to know. I'm pretty sure it hasn't because and Russian people mostly also like I said, even the war or anything else hasn't affected Russian people perspectives towards the neighboring countries. I think like most of the Russians, well, this is a, such a huge news, but I think most. People don't think bad against Ukrainians, even, and they shouldn't, of course. But I mean, you're talking about Russians or, or Russians? Finnish? Russians. That Russians probably don't think negative too much negative against the Ukrainian people. It has slightly moved, probably because of this huge mm, Tell you negativeness. What, even our president called them brothers and sisters. I, yeah, I believe exactly. in one of the recent speeches, and that to me they're certainly brothers and sisters they don't i don't think they consider us brothers and sisters yeah, any, any yeah, longer yeah. but yeah. like the korean people haven't done anything bad to us as a country and i don't see a reason why we need to change our opinions about them well in a very basic term we could elaborate about that more and more i could talk yes. hours about that issue yeah. but in general <laughs> Uh, I, my attitude to Ukrainians is even better than it used to be. Yeah. Um, I would like to finish with this question. I think that this situation that has resulted um, this drift chasm between Russia and Finland has brought more bad than good to both countries to Finland and to Russia. I think both countries have lost. Both Russia lost big time and Finland probably not as much but still lost economically, culturally, socially and so forth. Do you think that is true or not? That is definitely true. The the thing is that they feel that they cannot because of the situation that they are cannot Many co companies that have made that decision to leave cannot operate anymore in the in like, in, and this decision mostly I think is based on the um, PR, not that they fake, but that uh, I mean that because of the effect of uh, anti-Russian is so big that people demand their companies to leave. Otherwise, they would stop stop buying their products. Uh, in the main for for this company's main market, which is probably Finland, for example, most of the companies have like one one percent percentage Understood. of the uh, yeah. Yes. So, but anyway, they feel that they cannot operate anymore. That's why they have left it. Uh, some willingly, some less willing, willingly, but like huge percentage has left, and that's a the only company I know that in remaining in Russia is Rema because we shop for. The best best clothing, best apparel yeah. for outdoors for for kids. Yeah, I mean, yeah, hands yeah, down, best in the world. But it's still here. Every everyone else is left. Don't say that because now your Finnish audience might demand that company to leave. <laughs> that's the problem side. Well, I'm and sorry, it, that's it the might, truth. You know, and if, I, if, if the media notices, it will bring up the matter and then to start the pressurizing them to leave. But anyway, that's how the business operates in the journalistic world. But. Uh, Decades of work has been lost. Basically, 
it has started already in Soviet Union, the cultural thing and the business thing started in the 90s. There are companies that have been doing business there for 30 years. A lot of, by the way, smaller businesses out there, you probably haven't heard about them. They're like still hundreds of them. There was like uh, seven, a thousand companies, I guess, in, uh, in Russia from Finland. Uh, mostly well, operating in St. Petersburg and most and the big ones there are not that many but the most of them have left you're correct the, then of course the cultural level I mean uh, people to people thing I don't know how long will it take it has is it something positive huge positive has to work happen so that it starts reversing I don't know how that can happen and it has to be more than Igor in Russia with his Finland Igor. Russian series I don't I absolutely agree with you and I don't know what can happen. The only thing I can do is pray. I Maybe pray they can every cure day corona in my streams and bring in people together in prayer because yeah. that's the only thing left. We can discuss what could politically happen so that the deterior deterioration stops. But that's the whole different topic. What about reversing? Let, let's do another back? one in the future and then we'll talk sure. about that. Sure, and um, I have, I have, I'm personally, even though my channel is not, I'm quite political. I can explain why this happened. I said I have also ideas uh, and thoughts, but I don't want to like I, I keep them apart unless I'm being trolled it's too much. Well, Igor, <laughs> let me tell you, I'd like to give you a compliment. You're a very good uh, person to speak with. Very interesting. Very interesting. You too. You give, you add depth. To perception of many things at least for me i am sure that it's going to be extremely interesting for my viewers on my channel to learn your opinions because this is what i heard today is pure gold i'm i'm staying strong and i'm just like uh with open quite with open openly saying things even though many don't want to hear it here and i'm glad to share share the discussion with you well, you definitely have a platform for um, sharing your opinion here because my channel is no propaganda, no BS, no censorship. You know, I speak freely, well, as, as freely as Russian laws allowing these days, and they don't allow much. Um, I apologize, but I must follow the Russian laws. Okay, I don't break them. But... Um, I say everything I can, and I think this is the last pillar of goodness in the world that people can speak freely. If that is lost among us, then we're lost as society, and we, we would go to dark ages. So I think that's hugely important. And I thank you very much for coming to the channel. And again, what I've heard today is pure gold. Thank you. Um, one thing, I would like to do that again sometimes me as well and we can and on camera and off camera sounds good <laughs> sounds good uh. well igor thank you so much for coming and uh, everyone thank you for watching igor would you please talk about your channel what you do and direct people so they might want to go and see check out what you do on your youtube channel i make videos about uh, like my name says igor in russia even though i'm also living in finland mostly in finland actually but while i'm in russia i'm Igor in russia and i make content about uh, a life in st petersburg and russia elsewhere cultural uh, like daily uh, daily uh, perspective to the to the russian world because i think it says a lot just being on the streets and just uh, feeling the vibe and um, what you say interesting is that I have this Western background, so I bring it uh, in comparison to the Russian world. I may be explaining some stuff, daily stuff and uh, that type of thing. But so, so everybody should subscribe because it doesn't cost you anything unless you want to. <laughs> yes, please do subscribe to Igor's channel. Very interesting. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much, Igor. Thank you again. And uh, I will see you soon. All good. Everything good. Всего хорошего.